Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Last week's video was about how big a tractor do I get. Today's video is going to be about what options should I get if I'm shopping for a tractor. Now, tractors aren't like cars. You can't go down to your local dealer and say, I want a white one with leather seats and a moonroof and the big engine, and they order that and it comes in. You kind of got to take what the manufacturers offer in many cases, and there's not all that much stuff you can add. Now, sometimes there's what are called DIA kits or dealer installed accessory kits that the dealer can add. And if you don't get those when the tractor's new, sometimes those go obsolete pretty quick. And if you want them, you have to buy the individual parts to put it on the tractor. And, uh, and then there's some options that are not available on certain models and some options you can get from aftermarket suppliers a lot easier and cheaper than you can from the manufacturer. So it's kind of all over the place. And I'm going to go over a bunch of options today if you're shopping for your first tractor that will kind of help you understand what's, what's out there and what to look for and, and make you think about these things. So let's start out with the two easiest options. Get this on every tractor, especially the small ones. I hope those are not shots. So let's start out today with two options to get on every tractor, especially the small ones. Because even if you don't use them that much, the resale value on the tractor will be enough that it will justify and pay for itself over time. And that's four wheel drive, front wheel assist, and a front end loader. If you're buying a, a tractor and you think, well, I'll get the loader later, that doesn't work. Later, they'll be more expensive. You'll have to pay freight to get them in. You'll have to pay the dealer to put them on. Get it at the time you buy the new tractor. Of course, front wheel assist, you may think you'll never use it, but your resale value will be enough more, especially on the smaller tractors. A two wheel drive compact tractor has almost no resale value, so get front wheel assist and the front end loader. Now let's talk about the front end loader for a minute. Number three is quick attach. And there's two places they can be quick attach. They can be quick attach where you can take the entire loader off the tractor, and I could care less whether my loader is quick attach or not. But I want the front bucket to be quick attach. And the reason is because you can put different attachments on the tractor. And right now there are three different quick attaches out there that I know of on most of the new tractors. And that's the my favorite, the skid loader compatible quick attach, which means if you get this, it's also called a universal quick attach. Anything that fits a skid loader will fit your tractor. Deer has their own proprietary quick attach called a hook and pin, and it's fine, it works, but uh, they have it. So if you buy a deer tractor and you get all deer attachments with a hook and pin, you're less likely to trade later on because you have to trade in all your attachments. The third kind of quick attach, and this is only on the bigger tractors, about 50 horse on up, especially on the 80 and above tractors, is called a Euro or a Global Quick Attach. And that's a, a quick attach with one rod that goes, uh, what is that, horizontally to lock in the implement. And the advantage of Euro is it's rated for more weight than the skid loader compatible quick attach. But normally you don't get a choice. If you're buying any tractor but a deer, you're going to get a skid loader compatible quick, quick attach or a pin on bucket. And if you've got an older tractor or a new tractor with a pin on bucket and you want quick attach, go to my website. I probably offer it. Or you get a deer quick attach and, and that's offered through the deer dealers on their tractors only or the Euro. And sometimes you can decide whether you want a Euro or a skid loader quick attach. Attachments for skid loader quick attach are the most plentiful and the least expensive. So that's the way I would recommend going. The number four option you're going to have to look at, and this is personal preference, is transmission. Hydro or gear. If you get a hydrostat and you're a new tractor owner, the more ranges you have, the easier you're going to be to find a speed that suits you while you're getting trained on how to use it and getting comfortable with the machine. My tractor's got a two-range hydro with a two-range uh, shift on the go, an electric high-low. So I've actually got a four-range hydro. A lot of tractors have a three-range hydro with no shift on the go, and, and some of the less expensive tractors have a two-range hydro. The more ranges, the more speed you have in a hydro. Of course, hydros are infinite uh, gears, but sometimes with your throttle up for brush hogging, uh, you're going to be too fast in one of the higher gears. So the more ranges you have with Hydrostat, the more comfortable you're going to be with that tractor. Now if you go with a gear drive transmission, you've got three options there. Power shuttle, clutch shuttle, and no shuttle. 
And the difference is a power shuttle has a lever on the usually on the side of the steering column where you can shift back and forth without clutching. If you have bad knees or bad ankles or just don't like the hassle of having to push the clutch in, get a power shuttle. A clutch shuttle does the same thing, but you've got to push the clutch in in order to shift from forward to reverse. And generally, and but not always, those forward reverse gears are synchronized, so if you're moving a little bit, you can still shift from forward to reverse. And the last option is no shuttle, and we still see a few tractors with uh, eight by two transmissions or nine by three transmissions. Sometimes they're just straight cut gears, and just like an old, like an eight in Ford or, or one of those older tractors, and it's just a basic transmission. If you want to shift on the go, you're going to grind a little bit. If you want to go to forward reverse, you're going to grind a little bit. Sometimes some of those gears will be synchronized so you can shift on the go. But that's the basic transmission. That's going to be the least amount of money. If you're going to do a lot of loader work, get a power shuttle or a clutch shuttle. If you're just going to stick the thing in one gear and brush hog your entire pasture and you want to keep the cost down, get, get a, an 8x2 or a 9x3. Now the fifth thing to look at is tires. Probably 90% of all the small tractors right now have R4 tires on them, which are like skid loader tires. And they're a nice compromise between turf tires, you can go on your yard and not screw it up much, and ag tires with the deep lugs. And the other option is the ag tires, which have deeper lugs. People think they have better traction. I'm not always convinced. I was at a product introduction a few years ago where there was an ag tired tractor and an R4 tired tractor side by side and it rained like an inch the night before and the ag tired tractor with the deep lugs like a farm tractor dug out a rut and pretty soon was going in and out of ruts and the R4 tractor kind of stayed on top and didn't make as much of a rut and had better traction. So I'm not so sure that the R4 tractor is not the way to go and then there's turf tires and uh, you kind of want to avoid those unless you're just doing lawn work because they lose traction quickly, especially in snow or when they get anything packed in the, in the cleats. And there's a, a new tire called an R14 that I'm kind of intrigued by. It's available on certain models. It's kind of a combination between an ag lug and an R4. So that's your next option you got to think about. Now the next options I'm going to go through fairly quickly because they're pretty self-explanatory, but you need to know about them. Uh, number six is a folding roll bar. If you think you'll put your tractor in the garage once in a while and that roll bar is higher to the garage door, get a folding roll bar. It's really cost prohibitive to add that later, so get it when you buy the tractor. Not all tractors have it available. Number seven is economy PTO, and this is one you can't add. It's going to have it or not. A lot of the nicer tractors have got economy PTO, and I would like to have economy PTO on my tractor, and I don't have. With economy PTO, when you're brush hogging late in the season and you don't need power, you can shift into economy PTO and throttle down and your, your blades are still going fast so you get a nice cut, but you throttle down your engine and save fuel. The number eight option is extendable lower link arms, and that's link arms that you can lift a lever and they come out and you can hook up your implement if you're close to it and then back up and they lock in place. Quick hitches to me have kind of negated the need for these. I've got them on my tractor, don't really use them that much anymore with a quick hitch. The one I do use, and I highly recommend, is telescopic stabilizers. These are the arms that go from the axle of the tractor, or it could be from the, the center part of the tractor around the drawbar, out to the lower link arms. And a telescopic stabilizer has a pin in it where you can lift it up and make them any width you want. Turnbuckle stabilizers are where you have to crank them to tighten everything up. And you'll be doing this a lot, even with a quick hitch, you'll want to get the implement situated behind the tractor where you want it. If you've got telescopic stabilizers, you can easily offset it or lock it behind the tractor wherever you want. With turnbuckles, you've got to, and you'll get arms like Popeye, if you've got turnbuckles, you've got to twist that turnbuckle in and out to get it where you want it, and then lock it in place with some jam nuts. The next is your three-point adjustment. Different tractors have different designs on these. It's something you want to look at when you're selecting your tractor. And what I'm talking about is the mechanism that levels your lower link arms on your three-point. It could be a crank like this tractor. Uh, some tractors have a turnbuckle and some tractors have a mechanism that kind of looks like a turnbuckle that moves the three-point arms up and down. Uh, the more deluxe tractors will have those on both sides. Most tractors have that uh, ability to angle your implement only on one side on the right side of the tractor if you're facing the back end of it. Number 11 is a cab. I always tell people if you're thinking about getting a cab, get a cab. 
I've never known anybody that thought they might want a cab that got a cab that regretted it. I've known tons of people that got a, ca a tractor without a cab and wished the whole time they would have gotten it. And it costs a lot of money to change your mind. If you get an open station tractor or a ROPS tractor, tractor without a cab, decide later you want a cab, it's expensive to trade it. Now get a cab if you've got allergies, if you're real sensitive to heat and cold and you're going to be out in it a lot, or if you're in an area like I am with hornets that live in the ground that come after you once in a while, you may want a cab tractor. Number 12 is a seat. There's some cheaper tractors that have just a couple, three springs under the back of the seat. And if you're on the tractor a lot, that can get real old real quick. The better tractors will all have springs in it that you can crank and adjust to your weight. And the better seats yet have an armrest standard. And uh, the more springs you have and the more adjustment for your weight you have and the armrest, uh, if you have them, that's going to make your day uh, a lot easier, make you less fatigued at the end of the day. So look for a good seat on the tractor. The number 13 option to look at is remotes. And what remotes are, are hydraulic connections at the back of the tractor with quick couplers where you can plug a machine on the back of the tractor that needs hydraulic flow. Let's say you bought uh, a tractor and you wanted later on to put a disc mower conditioner on it. And the disc mower conditioner has one hydraulic cylinder that lifts the machine up and another tr a hydraulic cylinder that angles it out. So you need two hydraulic hoses for each function. One set of remotes is two plug-ins, and that's in oil and out oil and reversible. So in other words, if you have two holes, two ports on the back of the tractor, that's one set of remotes, and that can power one cylinder in and out. And get those when you get the tractor, because after the tractor gets some age on it, those kits are not available anymore, and you have to order each individual component through parts, and it's extremely expensive to do so, uh, almost prohibitive. Number 14 is a third function valve. That's a, a device that allows you to get hydraulic flow to the front of the tractor and power a grapple or a tree shear or a tree puller. If you don't get it when the tractor's new, I offer a diverter valve where you can divert the flow of oil from one function to another on my website. I'll put a link down in the description below. But if you uh, didn't get the third function valve and it's not available for the tractor anymore, a uh, diverter valve is an option, so it's not as important to get that when the tractor's new. Finally today, the last thing is a grill guard. And I wish I'd have got a grill guard for my tractor when it was new. They're not available anymore, uh, but uh, it's a, a nice investment. It might save you buying a hood for a tractor, which is pretty expensive. All of this information and more is available in my ebook, An Insider's Guide to Purchasing a Tractor. If you're shopping for tractors right now, go get the book on my website. It's $29.95 available in download only, but you'll get a coupon for that amount off an item on my website if you buy the book. So you can technically get the book for free. I appreciate you watching my videos. I would be honored if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can do that by clicking the mic face icon and checking the bell so you're notified when I post future videos. Here's a link to my website and the Tractor Fun Store with unique items for sale for the tractor owner that helps support my channel. And here's the video I did about finding what size tractor to buy. Thanks for watching.